Hi Stampers, long time no video, huh? Well, it's about time for me to get back into this. So I thought I'd do my first one on masking since we've had a couple of cards the last few classes where we've masked something and everybody always says, oh my gosh, I forget to do this. So these are some of the cards. These two we did this time. Uh, this one we did last time where we actually masked, masked off an area and all you do to make a mask for this kind of thing is to take a, a piece of cardstock the same size as your paper and cut out the area that you want to use. So we did, we cut this out, we put this on here and we sponged the soft suede ink, took this off and then we're able to stamp and get that effect. Much the same thing here with a circle, same thing, just a piece of cardstock with a circle cut out. We put the circle where we wanted it, we um, sponged the ink on, and then we're able to stamp. Did the same thing here. Sometimes with when you're using a mask like this, it's important to stamp outside of the area that's masked. See how this just comes outside a little bit? And here this comes outside a little bit and here um, it just gives a lot of interest to the area so just so we can you know be reminded we also did this starfish a little bit ago and we stamped the starfish first in this case those cases we sponged first but then we can put the circle exactly where we want it just take some of our ink this time I'm using pool party and then I can just sponge some of the ink on. Now this time I'm just being careful not to get into the image because I'm not using the same color. You know the before on the sea life one everything was in soft suede. Usually too you want to maybe be a little bit darker around the edges and see just with that little bit it gives you a really pretty uh, interest to your card and then you could add a greeting or some other kind of um, embellishments or something on here. Okay, so what if we want to um, mask the inside and color the outside? Well, we did that on our star card where I made a little mask of the small star. I put it here and then we just inked the yellow daffodil ink around that and that then gave us kind of a nice border on this card. I think that turned out very nice. So I thought if you wanted to see how to do that with a bigger one, this is just the inside of the mask I used for the other card here. So I'll take a piece of, I'm using washi tape, you can just use position, repositionable tape. If I stick that on there, and I'm doing that just so that the paper is held in the same position and it doesn't move. Okay, then again, I'm just going to ink this. I'm just I'm doing it very quickly just so you can get the idea. But inking the outside of the mask rather than the inside. This is going to give me kind of a frame. And again, you want to be a little bit darker right around the edge of where the mask is. Okay. Whoops. As you can see, that just gives me a nice area that I could then stamp in. For that, I'm going to use, this was a really cool free set that they sent us all. Everybody that's a Paper Pumpkin subscriber would have gotten this set. So I'm just going to stamp, oops, celebrate, just so I can show you how easy it is now to position this right exactly where I want it. And again, I'm not right over top of it, but you can see that looks really cool. And then I could add some other stamps here or something. So, you know, just another idea about masking. And it kind of takes the place sometimes of um, matting. You're, you know, so instead of having a small piece that you stamp on and then you mat it on a larger color, by doing the masking, you can kind of get the same effect. Okay, so then the other thing that we often use for masking is to cover an image so that we can make it appear like there's um, some depth. 
We did that um, a couple of classes ago with the little chicks, where we've got three of them stamped. They're overlapping, but you don't see behind this. So I thought I would do that with our new, not our new, but the Vintage Leaves set, which is new to me. And um, it's just so pretty. So what I did was I went ahead ahead of time and I created all my masks. Now how I do that is by stamping on a post-it note. Because a post-it note has a little bit of repositionable adhesive on the back, I stamped this on the post-it note and then cut it out. Okay, and then I always store my masks here on the inside of the um, stamp case so that I don't have to make a mask every time that I might want to use it. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So whenever you want to start and you want to stamp something in the foreground and something in the background, you always want to start with whatever is going to be in the foreground. So it's kind of backwards to the way that you might think. But we're going to stamp this nice leaf. I love these leaves. Right here. And that's going to be whoops, the one that I want in the front. Okay. Then, in order for the other things to appear behind this one, I need to mask that or match up and put my, my mask right over top of that so that now when I stamp another leaf, I'll use the Tangerine Tango for that one. Whoops, gotta get the leaf, not the mask, right? Ink that up. Okay, and maybe I want that one to go over here. Okay, you can see that it's stamped, but when I take off the mask, now this leaf appears that it's behind this one. I could do the same thing then. I could actually leave this mask on. I could add the mask that I made for this one. And again, by using the post-it note, and using the little, you know, posting on the sticky side or stamping on the sticky side of it, then I don't um, have to try to just hold my um, my uh, um, masks in position. So I think I'll stamp maybe this longer leaf here. Sorry, you can't see which one I'm choosing, but just sit in that. Take this one off. Okay. So then again ink that up, and maybe I'll want to stamp it right here. Oops, I didn't get that one very well, but you'll get the idea. So again, I've got the, the brown leaf I stamped first in the foreground, the yellow leaf behind it, and then the uh, mustard leaf behind that. So by using a mask, you can give your project some depth, like we want to do here, or like we did here with the little chicks, or you can give yourself a frame or a border uh, and really add some interest to your project very easily. So I hope you'll try masking and I'll see you again soon. Bye.